Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 17 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture, we started the second part of the course and that is probability theory. In the last lecture, I reviewed with you the basic concepts of set theory and also I conveyed to you a counting rule called the rule of multiplication which facilitates the solving of probabilistic problems. In today's lecture, we will continue with the counting rules and I will discuss with you permutations and combinations after which we will proceed to the further concepts. All right, let us begin the discussion with the concept of permutations. As you now see on the screen, a permutation is any ordered subset from a set of n distinct objects. For example, if we have the set AB, then one permutation is AB and the other permutation is BA. The number of permutations of R objects selected in a definite order out of n distinct objects is denoted by the symbol NPR and it is given by n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and so on up to n minus r plus 1. In short, we can say that NPR is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial. Factorials ko to aap jante hi hai. 7 factorial is 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Similarly, you can de define 6 factorial, 5 factorial and so on. 1 factorial will obviously be equal to 1 and also we define 0 factorial as 1. Similarly, you can think of all the higher factorials for integers which are greater than 7. Let us uh, consider an example to illustrate the concept of permutations. Suppose that we have a group of four persons and we, we would like to select out of them three persons in such a way that one is the president, one is the secretary and the third one the treasurer of a club. Now students, if you think about it logically, you can see that the post of the president is different from the post of the treasurer or the secretary. And so this is the case of permutations and not of combinations, which I will be discussing a short while later. If we go methodically, we see that the first position of the president, the president's post, is, for that, we have four options. Yani, of course, we are assuming that we have no personal judgment in this case. And we have all possible ways of selecting this uh, committee of three persons. Uh, all possible ways we consider kar rahe to us lihaz se jaisa maine abhi kaha the first post president iske liye hamare paas char options hain because we have four people aur jab ek shakhs ko humne le liya as president to uske baad jo uh, next post hai that is the secretary uske liye hamare paas teen options hain out of the remaining three persons jab humne usko bhi le liya so now treasurer ki post ke liye, there are only two options. Wo jo baaki do ashab bache hain, unhi mein se ek ko hum lenge. According to the multiplication rule which I discussed with you last time, if there are four ways of filling the first post and three ways of filling the second and two ways of filling the third, the total number of ways in which this task can be accomplished is 4 into 3 into 2 and that is equal to 24. Students, ye jo itni lambi discussion mein aapke saath ki, the rule of permutations gives us exactly the same answer and in a very convenient manner. 
as I discussed with you a few minutes ago, uh, NPR, the total number of permutations of n objects or n elements taking r at a time is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial. In this example, n is equal to 4 and r is equal to 3. This is why char log hain aur unme se teen ko hum select kar rahe hain for, for this um, club. And if I substitute these values in this formula, then as you now see on the screen, the answer is 4 factorial over 4 minus 3 factorial, and that is equal to 4 into 3 into 2, and that is 24. Or if we want to see that these 24 possible ways are, what a tree diagram is the most convenient way of representing this information. As you now see on the screen, if we have a tree diagram in such a way that the first four branches represent the president, the next 12 represent the secretary, and the next 24 uh, for the treasurer, um, then the possible ways of selecting the committee are A, B, C, A, B, D, A, C, B, A, C, D, A, D, B, A, D, C, and so on. The point to note is that a tree diagram gives us a very methodical way of representing the 24 possible situations. Or ye jo methodical way hai, students, actually it is very important that you do practice with a number of questions so that you are able to understand the pattern in which uh, this thing goes. Is liye ke agar aap ise methodically na kare, to it is quite easy to get confused. Lekin agar aap usko ghor se dekhe, aur thode se questions aap kare aur practice kare, to aap dekhenge, it is not very difficult. It follows a pattern and you can proceed in that manner. The next thing to realize is that the formula that I just gave you, uh, the special case of this formula is when r, is e r itself is equal to n. As you now see on the screen, in the formula of NPR, putting r equal to n, we obtain NPN is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and so on up to 3 into 2 into 1 and that is n factorial. That is the total number of permutations of n distinct objects taking all n at a time is equal to n factorial. Aye. Is formula ko bhi ek uh, bade interesting example ke zariye understand karte hain. Suppose that there are uh, three persons, yourself, your sister and your brother. And you would like to have a photograph. Lekin aapki aapis mein ladai ho rahi hai ke maine beech wali kursi pe baithna hai aur aapke bhai keh rahe hain ke nahi maine baithna hai. To agar hum uh, isko permutations ke zariye dekhe to n is equal to 3, aap teen hai, and there are three, uh, three chairs and you want to, uh, we would like to see how many different ways of um, seating arrangement for this photograph. According to the formula that I just presented to you, the total number of ways of uh, permuting three objects or three individuals all at a time is equal to 3 factorial and 3 factorial is 3 into 2 into 1 and that is 6. So now, these 6 positions, 6 mukhtalif tasaweer you can take and it's better that you take 6 of them so that you don't have to fight in your And what are the 3, um, the 6 photographs that are possible? If uh, the 3 people are Aisha, 
Bashir and Daoud. The six photographs are Aisha Bashir Daoud, Aisha Daoud Bashir, Bashir Aisha Daoud, Bashir Daoud Aisha, Daoud Aisha Bashir, and Daoud Bashir Aisha. I hope you follow the earlier point that I made that it is actually very systematic and you just have to go about it methodically. All the discussion that we have done up till now pertained to the case when we have n distinct objects under consideration. If we have a situation where some of the objects are not distinct, then the formula for permutations modifies in the manner that you now see on the screen. The number of permutations of n objects selected all at a time when n objects consist of n1 of one kind, n2 of a second kind, and so on up to nk of a kth kind, this number is given by n factorial over n1 factorial into n2 factorial into so on up to nk factorial. Let us consider an example to illustrate the concept. Consider the word committee. This word spells C O double M I double T double E. And you can notice that the three letters M, T, and E are repeated. So if I consider all these letters in this word as members of a set, then I can see easily that all the members of this set are not distinct. M is repeated, T is repeated, and same for E. Now, if I would like to permute um, all these um, letters, in order to form a, a vast num number of words, some of which, of course, many of which will be meaningless, but if my purpose is such that the meaning doesn't matter, but I am interested in forming all possible words that I can, students, I will be applying the formula that I just presented to you. As you now see on the screen, in this example, n is equal to 9, because the total number of letters in this word is 9. n1 is equal to 1 because there is only one c, n2 is 1 because there is one o, n3 is 2 because of two m's, n4 is 1 because of one i, n5 is 2 because of the fact that there are two t's, and n6 is equal to 2 because there are two e's. And if we substitute all these numbers in our formula for permutations, the total number of meaningless words from the word committee comes out to be 45360. That is 45,360. Ye to tha rule of permutations. Jaisa ke aapne note kiya, any permutation is an ordered subset out of a set. The other rule is the rule of combinations or permutations or combinations mein jo bunyadi aur ahem farq hai wo ye hai ke in the combinations order doesn't matter. As you now see on the screen, a combination is any subset of R objects out of a set of N distinct objects and the R objects are selected in such a way that the order does not matter. The total number of such combinations is denoted by the symbol NCR or we write N and R in a bracket in such a way that N is written on the top and R is written on the bottom. The formula for 
the number of combinations of n things taking r at a time is given by n factorial over r factorial into n minus r factorial. It should be noted that n p r is equal to r factorial times n c r. In other words, every combination of r objects out of n objects generates r factorial permutations. Ye jo point maine aapko abhi convey kiya, this is quite an important point and if you understand it properly, this gives you a better insight regarding the difference between permutations and combinations and also regarding the relationship between the two. Let me explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose we have a group of three persons, A, B and C. If we wish to select a group of two persons out of these three, the three possible groups will be AB, AC and BC. In other words, the total number of combinations of size 2 out of this set of size 3 is 3. If we apply the formula of NCR that is n factorial over r factorial into n minus r factorial putting n is equal to 3 and r is equal to 2 we get exactly the same result and that is 3. अभी मैंने आपसे जो डिस्कशन की उसमें हम ये अस्यूम कर रहे हैं कि हमें कोई कमिटी इस तरह की नहीं बनानी कि एक शख्स प्रेसिडेंट है और दूसरा शख्स सेक्रेटरी इट्स जस्ट अ ग्रुप ऑफ टू पर्सन एंड सो दी ऑर्डर डजेंट मैटर और जैसे मैंने कहा कि वो तीन ग्रुप्स बन रहे हैं एक के अंदर ए और बी हैं दूसरे के अंदर ए और सी हैं और तीसरे के अंदर बी और सी हैं बट नाउ सपोज दैट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन forming um, committees in such a way that one is the president and the other is the secretary. As you now see on the screen, if we want to do this kind of a job, then we can have six committees and they are AB, BA, AC, CA, BC and CB. In other words, the total number of permutations of two persons out of three is six. But the point to note is that each of the three combinations mentioned earlier generates two, in other words, two factorial permutations. The combination AB generates the permutations AB and BA. The combination AC generates the permutations AC and CA. And similarly, the combination BC generates the permutations BC and CB. So, this is the relationship that exists between the total number of combinations that you can have and the total number of permutations that you can have from one particular set and of a particular size that you select out of it. Ye jo example humne abhi consider kiya, ye to bohat hi chota sa example tha. Agar aap isko thoda sa bada kare, and you consider the case where n is equal to 6 and r is equal to 3, to aap dekhenge ke combinations ki tadad to 20 banti hai. 6 factorial over 3 factorial into 6 minus 3 factorial. Lekin agar aap permutations ki tadad jana chahte hain, to simply multiply this number 20 by r factorial and that is 3 factorial and that is 6 and we find that the number of permutations is 120. That is 6 into 20, 6 into the number of combinations. The quantity NCR is also called a binomial coefficient because of the fact 
that it appears in the binomial expansion of a plus b whole raised to n. As you may be already aware, a plus b whole raised to n can be written as sigma r goes from 0 to n, n c r a raised to n minus r into b raised to r. The binomial coefficient has two important properties. Number one, n c r is equal to n c n minus r. And number two, n c n minus r plus n c r is equal to n plus one c r. I would like to encourage you to practice with these formulas. Aap n or r ke liye numerical values rakhye aur dekhye ke ye formulas valid hain ke nahi. Also, there are some other very useful formulas. It, it is to be noted that n c 0 is equal to 1 and so is n c n. Also, n c 1 is equal to n and n c n minus 1 is also equal to n. Let me illustrate the concept of combinations with the help of another example. As you now see on the screen, the question that in how many ways can a person draw a hand of five cards from a well shuffled ordinary deck of 52 cards? The answer to this question is also found by finding the combination the all possible combinations of five cards out of 52 cards, which is given by 52 factorial over five factorial into 52 minus five, and that is 47 factorial. And this comes out to be equal to 2598960. In other words, two million 598,960 ways of drawing five cards out of 52. Okay, we have now reviewed the basic concepts of the various kinds of rules that enable us to solve a number of probabilistic problems in a convenient manner. Now that we have done this review, let us proceed to the basic concepts that lead to the formal definitions of probability. The first concept in this regard is that of a random experiment. Experiment ke lafz se to hum sab waqifi hain. And if I, would, if I were to put it formally, I would say that an experiment is a planned activity that generates a set of data. Um, any single performance of the experiment is called a trial and the result of the experiment is called an outcome. Ye to hua experiment, lekin maine aap se kaha ke hamare liye jo pehla important concept hai, that is random experiment. So what do I mean by random experiment? As you now see on the screen, an experiment which produces different results even though it is repeated a large number of times under essentially similar conditions, this is called a random experiment. The tossing of a fair coin, the throwing of a balanced die, the drawing of a card out of a deck of well shuffled cards, these are all examples of random experiments. Isliye ke jo bunyadi condition uski definition ki aapke mene present ki that it produces different results even if it is repeated a large number of times under essentially similar conditions. Ye condition in tino examples mein aap dek sakte hain ke it is fulfilled. Dai ko aap bar bar phenke aur ek hi tarah se more or less aap phenke but sometimes you get a one and sometimes you get a six. Similarly, for the drawing of the card or the tossing of a coin. Technically speaking, 
A random experiment has three properties. Number one, the experiment can be repeated practically or theoretically any number of times. Number two, the experiment always has two or more possible outcomes. An experiment that has only one possible outcome, that is not a random experiment. And property number three is that the outcome of each repetition is unpredictable. It has some degree of uncertainty. Ye jo example mein abhi aapko thori der pehle diye, the tossing of a coin or a die or the drawing of a card out of a deck of cards. Uh, you know, you can argue that these are not the kinds of situations that we are dealing with most of the time. So let us consider a more realistic example. Consider the process of interviewing a person. Aap ek shaks ko interview kar rahe aur aap sirf ek hi question pooch rahe And that is, are you a smoker? Students, aap realize kare ke even this little interview, this can also be regarded as a random experiment because it fulfills the three properties that I just presented to you. The first one, that it can be repeated any number of times. Well, of course, in a large city like Lahore, Karachi or Islamabad, um, you can ask this question not uh, 20 times, not 100 times, but thousands and thousands of times. This experiment can be repeated a very large number of times. And the second point that the uh, experiment has at least two possible outcomes. Well, it is obvious. Jab aap interview karenge, to aapko kam as kam do jawab to definitely possible hai ke aapko mile. I am a smoker or I am not a smoker. And then of course you can have variations to this report this answer uh, if he is a smoker but he smokes only very seldom he can give you that information but at least you have these two possible answers that I am a smoker or I am not a smoker and the last point extremely important point that the outcome is unpredictable in advance jab tak aap usse interview kar nahi lete Usse pehle, you do not know what the, what the answer is going to be. Is he going to tell you that he is a smoker or is he going to make a statement otherwise? So, students, this is uh, an example which uh, illustrates the fact that mathematical rigorous definitions like the one that I just presented, they can also be applied in real life situations. And this is the crux of the matter and the heart of the subject of statistics. As I have been conveying to you numerous times, statistics after all is that mathematical science that enables you to draw conclusions about real life phenomena on the basis of evidence and data that you collect on sample basis. Closely related to the concept of the random experiment is the concept of the sample space. As you now see on the screen, a set consisting of all possible outcomes that can result from a random experiment, this can be defined as the sample space for the experiment and it is denoted by the letter S. Each possible outcome is a member of the sample space and it is called a sample point in that space. Let us consider a few very simple examples. Suppose we toss one single coin. The sample space of this experiment will be the set head and tail and we assume that the coin is not going to stand on its edge or to roll away. So 
if it is going to land either head up, upward or tail upward, then it is obvious that the set of all possible outcomes consists of only these two sample points. Now, if we consider the case of tossing two coins simultaneously, then of course the sample space will be a bit more complex and as you now see on the screen, in this case, the sample space will contain four sample points and these are head head, head tail, tail head and tail tail. Clearly, S is the Cartesian product A cross A where A is the set head tail. Bilkul isi tarase, if I toss one single die, the sample space will consist of six elements, one, two, three, four, five, and six. But if I toss a pair of dice, the sample space will consist of the Cartesian product A cross A, where A is the set one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the Cartesian product A cross A will consist of 36 elements that you now see on the screen. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, and so on. The next concept is that of events. Any subset of a sample space is an event. Now the subset can consist of just one sample point or it can be a combination of sample points and accordingly we have the distinction between what we call a simple event and the one that is called a compound event. For example, as you now see on the screen, the occurrence of a six when a die is thrown is a simple event while the occurrence of a sum of 10 when a pair of dice is thrown is a compound event, the reason being that it can be decomposed into three simple events, 4, 6, 5, 5 and 6, 4. Jab hum sum of 10 ki baat karte hain, tab ye tino outcomes ek set form karte hain, 4, 6, 5, 5 and 6, 4. As you can see, the sum is 10 for any one of them. And since this set consists of these three ordered pairs, hence it is a compound event. Students, the next concept and a very important concept is the concept of the occurrence of an event in a real life situation when we are performing a random experiment. As you now see on the screen, an event A is said to occur if and only if the outcome of the experiment corresponds to some element of A. For example, if we toss a die and we are interested in the occurrence of an even number, if any of the three numbers, two, four or six occurs, we say that the event of our interest has occurred. Is uh, discussion ke andar students, jo point hai wo ye hai, ke even number ki agar hum baat kar rahe hain, to zahir hai ke 2 ya 4 ya 6, in mein se koi bhi number agar aa jaye, to even number to akar ho gaya na? Aur zahir hai ke jab aap die ko toss karenge, to ye tino ke tino number bayak vakt to akar nahi ho jayenge. You will either get a 2 or a 4, or a six. So the point to understand is that when we represent an event by means of a set, us set ke andar to hum wo sare outcomes lik denge, two, four, six. Lekin jab in reality aap wo experiment karenge, to un tino me se ya un sab me se sirf ek actually akar karega. Wo ek bhi agar akar kar gaya, 
तो हम कहेंगे that the event of our interest has occurred. The next concept is that of the complementary event. As you now see on the screen, the event not A is called the complementary event and it is denoted by A bar or A C. For example, if we toss a coin once, then the complement of the event heads is tails. And if we toss a coin four times, then the complement of the event, at least one head, is the event no heads. The event at least one head, of course, um, contains the three ordered pairs head head, head tail, and tail head. But the complementary event, no heads, is the fourth outcome of the sample space, and that is tail tail. I hope that it is clear to you that the complementary event and the original event, they are disjoint, and they do not overlap. Isliye, के कॉम्प्लीमेंट का तो मतलब ही ये है कि वो एलिमेंट्स जो उस पहले इवेंट के अंदर शामिल नहीं हैं। नाउ द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट एनी सेट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ एन एलिमेंट्स हैज टू रेस टू एन पॉसिबल सबसेट्स एंड सो इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ अ सैंपल स्पेस consisting of n sample points, we can say that it produces two raised to n different subsets, or in other words, events, some of which are simple, some are compound, and also one of them is the null set. For example, if a sample space consists of three sample points, a, B, and C, then there are two raised to three, that is eight possible subsets, and they are phi, A, B, C, AB, AC, BC, and ABC. Ye jo eight possible subsets hain, in me se do khasusi interest ke hamil hain. The null set phi represents the impossible event. Uh, the reason is that it does not contain any of the elements of the sample space. And as I discussed a short while ago, ek event to tab occur hota hai, jab uske andar jo sample points ho, unme se koi occur kare. To नल सेट में जब कोई सैंपल पॉइंट एग्जिस्ट ही नहीं करता तो उस हवाले से इट रिप्रेजेंट्स द इम्पॉसिबल इवेंट द अदर सेट ऑफ पर्टिकुलर इंटरेस्ट इज द सैंपल स्पेस इट सेल्फ एज यू सॉ इन दिस एग्जाम्पल वन ऑफ द सबसेट्स ऑफ द सेट ए बी सी इज द सेट ए बी सी एंड स्टूडेंट्स दिस सेट रिप्रेजेंट्स द शोर इवेंट it is called a sure event because obviously when we conduct the random experiment, it is definitely sure that one of the elements of the sample space is going to occur. All right, now that we have understood the basic concept of events, the next point that I would like to discuss with you at some length is the concept of the various types of events that we may encounter when we conduct a random experiment. These are the mutually exclusive events, exhaustive events, and equally likely events. I will discuss them with you at length in the next lecture. At this point in time, I will summarize the idea by giving you the very 
basic definitions of the three concepts. By mutually exclusive events students, we mean those events which cannot occur at the same time. In other words, they exclude each other. For example, if I toss a die, I will either get an odd number or an even number. It is not possible that I get an odd number and an even number at the same time. The other concept, exhaustive events, means that if we have two or more mutually exclusive events, and if they are such that when we take their union, we obtain the entire sample space, these are called exhaustive events. In the example that I just gave you, uh, the event odd number and the event even number, these are exhaustive because if I take the union of the two, I obtain the entire sample space, one, three, five, two, four, six, or in other words, one, two, three, four, five, and six. The last concept at this point is the concept of equally likely events. For example, if I am tossing a coin which is perfect, uh, you know, it is absolutely symmetric, well made, then it is obvious that we can say that when I will toss it, the chances of getting a head are exactly the same as the chances of getting a tail. In other words, head and tail are equally likely to occur. As I said earlier, I will be discussing these concepts with you in a little bit of detail in the next lecture. In the meantime, I hope that you will enjoy studying the basic concepts of probability and my best wishes to you. Until next time, Allah Hafiz.